Welcome to the course, An Introduction to Programming. In this presentation, we'll look at uh, who needs to know about programming. Certainly, one of the problems today is that there's just a, a wealth of languages out there, so which one do you pick to sort of become an expert in? And in this course, we'll look at Python as the programming application language that we'll use. And it's designed as an introduction. Every computer professional needs to know something about programming. Who are the computer professionals out there? Well, obviously developers, those who create applications, need to uh, know programming uh, at a very uh, deep level. But also website creators, IT systems management, uh, network administrators, they also uh, all need to have a good working knowledge of how computer languages work, how programs are built. So what do they need to know? Well, they need to know how applications are developed. They also need to know how they work. They may not be developing them themselves, but at some point, all computer professionals will need to create some type of process which is repeated. And whether it's a scripting language, whether they're working at DOS or what is called PowerShell, they'll all use computer languaging uh, components. So, how do we create a computer application? Well, one of the first things we need to do is, if we have a problem, we need to model what we're trying to either solve or create. In this example here, we're creating a web shopping application. So, we need to browse, browse products or add products to cart, submit orders, have a payment system. So, we need to create models of all those. We then need to create an algorithm. And an algorithm is a uh, method uh, or flow of how something works. There are different ways which you can document algorithms. This is uh, an algorithm using a flowchart. And the flowchart has various elements. You can see here a diamond is a decision, which has a yes or no answer. So diamonds are throughout this algorithm. You have trapezoids, which generally indicate input and output. Rectangles here are for processes. Now an algorithm has, uh, especially diagramming an algorithm, has a couple purposes. The first is to make sure that you can document the process, you know how it works, but it's also uh, to document uh, for someone who might maintain your program uh, once you're done. After you've done the algorithm, the uh, certainly the nuts and bolts is to create the actual program and you have just a, a variety of programming languages which you can choose and each one has uh, different strengths and weaknesses. So we'll look at the tools of the trade for creating computer programs and certainly what computer programs run on. And the first is the actual computer, the hardware and the operating system that you want to choose. Now you may choose a Windows PC, the hardware is uh, based on microprocessors from Intel, so you may be running Windows 7 or Windows 8. You may want to run applications for the iMac uh, platform, and iMacs use the same hardware today as Windows PC, that is an Intel-based microprocessor. But their operating system is based on Unix, and it's called OS X. Various versions, Mavericks, uh, the newest one uh, yet to come out is called Yosemite. You might be running on a Linux platform or Unix. They're popular. Uh, Linux is very popular in Europe. Unix is popular uh, for server type systems. But today mobile devices are becoming increasingly uh, popular. In fact, there are more mobile devices out there than desktop computers. Windows has uh, a desktop plat or sorry, a mobile platform called Surface. And one of the Surface uh, variance is exactly like a desktop. It has an Intel a CPU in the Windows operating system, but another runs on a microprocessor called ARM, and we call it Windows RT today. That name is certainly uh, going to change, but applications for that type of tablet uh, require uh, a different uh, type of development uh, process. Certainly the iOS devices are very popular, the iPad, the iPhone, 
and the Android uh, phone and tablet market are huge. So you first need to decide what am I going to develop applications on, what am I going to use uh, as a computer, but also what is the target that the application is going to run on. I could develop applications on a Windows PC that may run on uh, an Android a tablet or phone. Almost all applications today are going to make use of the network in, in some way, whether we're storing data in the cloud or it's a client server type of application, maybe using social media. And so we need to know uh, quite a bit about protocols that are going to be used in this networking environment, uh, whether it's HTML, what web pages use, CSS is cas cascading style, uh, sheets, which gives a look and feel to our program, making sure that it works and displays on mobile devices, maybe as well as uh, desktop devices. Maybe the application interfaces with uh, an email product, and so it might need a simple, uh, might need knowledge of the simple mail uh, transport protocol. Uh, the last is you need to pick the actual programming language uh, that you're going to use, and there are a number of programming languages out there, but the programming languages allows you to assemble um, code blocks, if you will, just like building a robot. Often many people uh, work in teams to create a program to create the final product. So where will I use these programming concepts? Often students that are in assistance management say, I don't want to be a programmer, but you'll find that you'll use programming concepts uh, everywhere in, uh, in working in the information technology field. Uh, certainly if you're maintaining machines and you have some red, re repetitive tasks, you will may work at the command line, uh, build some type of script. Windows Server and, and Windows 8 have something called Windows PowerShell built in, which is a a pretty powerful command line environment. OS 10 is built on Unix and at the heart of Unix uh, it's a command line based uh, operating system but OS 10 also has things like Ruby and PHP and Python built in so you can create scripts and programs uh, right away. Web page designers they're going to use HTML and CSS programming uh, extensively also they're going to probably use a lot of Java and PHP. And even if you're just involved with networking and maintaining infrastructure, uh, Cisco switches and routers, uh, um, Cisco, Dell, HP, they're all programmed with a command, uh, command line language as well. Many have uh, GUIs that you can use, but there certainly are some uh, problems that can't be solved unless you're working at the uh, command line. And at this point you're working pretty well in a, in a type of scripting or uh, programming uh, language. So no matter what job you have as a computer professional, you're going to use programming concepts. Now it's always a task to choose a programming language for an introductory programming course. Uh, one company looked at the popular coding languages in 2014 and they looked at Python as being probably the most popular. Now that doesn't mean Python is used in most applications. It's not. Most applications are probably using some variant of C or Java. But Python uh, has a number of advantages. It's very quick to create uh, sample code. It's used a lot in the educational environment, whether at universities for intro to programming courses like this, but also introduction to artificial intelligence courses, uh, AI. It's also uh, used to quickly uh, create some type of program which works. Uh, it may not be the fastest language out there, but you can sort of get the look and feel of programs uh, an application. You'll notice Java is very popular. Uh, C and Ruby, those are probably the most popular uh, languages out there for developing applications. So where did Python came from, come from? It was uh, developed actually in the 80s, so it's actually pretty old. Uh, it was developed by a guy named Guido Van Rosen, and it was designed as a general purpose, uh, easy language to learn and to be able to um, create a computer application which is with as few 
uh, instructions as possible. It's got uh, extensive libraries, uh, which means that you don't need to reinvent the wheel or develop all parts of your program from scratch. You can use libraries which um, process web pages if you want to uh, design your own web crawler. It's very easy to do. Python actually came from um, the author's uh, preference for comedy shows. Monty Python's Flying Circus is a, a BBC comedy show. If you have any interest, you can look certainly on the net and, and look at some of that, but that's where the name Python came from. The author um, is Dutch. This is Guido. Uh, worked uh, at Google for a number of years. Today he's uh, working on Dropbox. He still maintains sort of the core of Python. There are two versions of Python out there. Uh, Python version 2, which is at about version 2.7 now, and version 3. This course is going to use Python 3, and the development uh, environment we're going to use is called an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. We're going to use one called IDLE. Now, IDLE is available from python.org. And if I go to python.org, you'll see a web page like this. These are examples here of Python programs. And if you want to install uh, Python yourself, and I certainly encourage you to do this on your home machine so you can practice your programs, you go to the downloads area and you can download Python 3. Uh, the current version here is 3.41. I'm operating on a Mac, so it brings up that download option for me automatically, but you can download also for Windows, and these are the various releases for uh, Windows, 341 for Windows here. It's very easy to install. Once you do install it and run the idle environment, you'll get something like this, which is the Python shell, like a console. If I hit the enter key, um, we'll see we'll get a prompt. Now, Python uh, unlike some languages, is interactive. That means as I type of command, I get um, an output right away. This interactive language makes it very easy uh, to debug, or very quick to debug, because as you type uh, statements, you can see if they work or not. Development environment also is uh, color-coded, so you can see which Elements of Python are what we call comments or text, which are keywords. You can look at the output. So this is a version of uh, the Python uh, shell. One of the main goals of this program is to develop computational thinking. And we'll look at what computational thinking is with a, a sample program here. So let's suppose we want to purchase a dozen uh, prize-winning novels from an online uh, shopping website. We don't want to pay full price, and we've got a price in mind that we want to, we want to uh, pay, and we call this the target price. So every couple of days, we could visit the web page and look at all the books and all the, um, all the prices to see if they match our target, but that would be pretty labor-intensive. So we want to automate this with some type of program. The first, uh, the first task in computational thinking uh, is to um, work at a layer called abstraction. And abstraction is simplifying the program, throwing away that which is irrelevant, and keeping just the relevant information. Now, the relevant information is that uh, we're going to uh, interact with web pages. We need to create a list that contains addresses of all the products, all the novels we're interested in, and we need to create a list of the target prices that we want to pay. So the output from this, after we've done this abstraction, is a model. This represents the aspects of uh, the problem that we need to solve. 
So once we have a model, we go ahead and generate an algorithm uh, to solve our problem. And there are different ways that we can document or create an algorithm. And we showed one earlier using what was called a flowchart. Another is using something called pseudocode. Now, pseudocode doesn't come from any one particular language. It's a generic way of writing um, sort of program type of statements in English, um, but also it uses elements of virtually every programming language. The purpose of pseudocode is uh, to try to document how your program is going to work for yourself so you can work out the details, but also for anyone else who may maintain your code uh, after you've written the program. It's very common for programmers to write program and then work on another project. Someone else may come in and have to maintain the, pro the code. So if you have your algorithms written in pseudocode, it's a way of documenting your, uh, your programs. So let's look at the elements of an algorithm uh, that uses pseudocode. One of the first is data types, and in math we would call these variables. So you see we have a number of data types here. Each has a name that is uh, descriptive. N, ADDR is an address uh, in the list for addresses of each of the uh, products, each of the novels. The page actually is the content of the web page. Current uh, contains the current price. TARG would be the target price. Every algorithm generally has what's called a conditional control structure. That is somewhere in this controls, control structure there's a test. Here we'll see that if the current price of a novel is less than the target price, what we want to do is print the address, the page address. So we have a test. Is the current price less than the target? We have an output, a yes or no, or true and false. And depending on whether it's true and false, we're going to perform some action. So every computer program, most computer programs, have some type of conditional control structure. Algorithms also uh, contain iteration control structures. If we want to rep repeat any action, we create some type of iteration structure. Here, n is the number of products that we have in our list and maybe 10, maybe I have 10 novels I'm interested in. So you can see that for every product i equals 0, 2, and if n is 10 it goes from 0 to 9. You'll find that in computer programs we start counting at 0 very often rather than 1. So we're going to repeat a loop of statements here. All these statements are going to get repeated from 0 to 9 or 10 times. So these statements I execute once, uh, I have a loop counter that keeps track of it, it's zero at the beginning, and it gets incremented every time. Uh, after the ninth time, uh, we stop. So we do this loop ten times. So this is an algorithm written in pseudocode, and often uh, it's one of the steps uh, probably the students um, find difficult to complete, but if you learn to develop algorithms and document it, it certainly makes uh, your program uh, easier to debug and uh, and makes it usually more accurate. Finally, you'll write the program and almost every program that's first written doesn't work so then the job of debugging comes in. And debugging is likely the most difficult um, skill to master uh, in an introductory uh, programming course. And Brian Kernigan was uh, an author of one of the more famous C programming language books who um, also attests to the fact that uh, debugging can be very uh, difficult. So we're going to start our introductory to programming course. You'll find it challenging, but uh, we hope that you'll, you'll have fun with it. Certainly every computer professional uh, will encounter uh, computer uh, programming concepts as they uh, start their career.